In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe, and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they shall call her, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior, and for you I wait all the day. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, and that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times, 
and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a story about a cardinal who nervously delivered an urgent message to the Holy Father. He said, the end of the world is coming and the second coming of Christ is imminent. What shall we do? The Pope glanced from one side to the other and then he whispered to the cardinal, look busy. 50,000 followers of the preacher, William Miller, believed that the world would end on April 23rd, 1843, but the light of the rising sun the next morning exposed their confusion and their disappointment. Prophets who predicted the end of the world have one thing in common. They've all been wrong. They believed too much, but others believed too little, as if Christ might never come. But he says, you must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Cardinal Newman warned against becoming infected with the breath of the world, what he called a rusting of the soul. Jesus describes this in two of the most alarming passages in scripture about the last days. In Matthew's gospel, he says, because wickedness is multiplied, most people's love will grow cold. In Luke's gospel, he asks, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Advent begins by looking at the end, the final coming of Christ, for which the first coming is preparation. We rejoice that God became flesh, that he took on our weakness to redeem us. We cannot kneel at the nativity scene without looking ahead to when Christ will return at the end of time. During these coming weeks that the church celebrates Advent, department stores focus on the Christmas rush for gifts and miss the deeper meaning of Advent, preparation for the final coming of Christ. The way to real preparation comes in the words of Jesus when he says, watch at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all the things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Perseverance in faith and love is a gift of grace, and we need to pray for it. The other most important way to prepare for the final coming of Christ is to receive him kindly when he comes into our everyday lives. Marshall Fields is a department store in Chicago, and it's always been a kind of paradise, especially in the weeks leading up to Christmas. One such day, the atmosphere was shattered when a homeless woman wearing shabby clothes and carrying her many bags walked through the doors. People expected security to intervene, but no one tried to stop her as she inspected the racks of fine clothes, where she was greeted warmly by a saleswoman. Her responses to the homeless woman were solicitous and not patronizing, respectful and not pitying. When she asked to try on an evening dress, the saleswoman brought over several gowns she thought were the most flattering and appropriate. She let her try all of them on. After about an hour, the woman decided that she was finished and she thanked the saleswoman. She looked different now as she left the store. She held her head high and there was a certain brightness in her eyes that was missing when she walked in. An observer asked the employee why she wasted her time with this poor woman who she knew wouldn't buy anything. The saleswoman answered, this is what we are here for, to serve and to be kind. To prepare for the coming of Christ, we should be busy serving and being kind to everyone, for Christ can come to us in many ways, even as a homeless person. Then when he comes to us on our last day, it will not be as a thief in the night, but as our savior taking us home to heaven. Together, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we begin this season of Advent, we look for the coming of the Lord, and as we await his arrival, we bring these needs before our ever-present God. For all church leaders, that they will continue to work for justice and the dignity of the human person, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all leaders of nations, that they will help those whom they serve to live in harmony and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel lonely and for those who are alone, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our communities of faith, that peace and unity may abide in us as we journey together towards the promised kingdom of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For health and blessings for Callista Leslie, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died and gone before us in the faith of Christ, that they may enjoy the peace of God's kingdom. Today, we remember all those souls entrusted to our prayers during this month of November, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those confined to their homes due to age or illness, for those in nursing homes or hospitals and those who care for them, and for all those intentions we now offer from the silence of our hearts. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you are our light and our salvation. We ask you to hear the prayers that we bring before you this day and to answer them according to your holy will, for we offer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, 
He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he, broke, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Bishop, Bishop William Byrne, has proclaimed the coming year to be the year of the Eucharist for us here in the Diocese of Springfield. And he's asked us to say a prayer for the year of the Eucharist at each Mass. And so we pray. Jesus, I believe that you are truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. In you I place my whole family. Heal our wounds and renew us in heart and mind with a greater reverence, devotion, and love for you in the Holy Eucharist. Our Lady, first tabernacle of the Word made flesh, intercede on our behalf to your Son, especially for the Diocese of Springfield and our priests. Through their love for the priesthood and the Eucharist, may they inspire young men to the priesthood that the Mass may continue to be offered so that we may be nourished with your Son's body and blood. Guide especially our youth to your church so they may thrive by knowing the truth that comes only from Jesus. Most Holy Trinity, I adore you. My God, I love you in the most blessed sacrament. Amen. And before our final blessing and dismissal, I just want to let you know that next Sunday we will have a special guest here with us, the Bishop of our Diocese, Bishop William Byrne, will be here to celebrate Mass with us for the second Sunday of Advent, and we are very much looking forward to celebrating with him. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. <laughs>